Hi, my name is Manuel Lipani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR Channel. Today, we continue our discussion on design of mechanotropy. That is covered in more details in Volume 2 of Mechanotropy. As you remember from the previous session, we discussed that the first step of design of mechanotropy is to define the target units. The target unit could be a dental arch, a segment, or individual tooth. Also, we needed to define whether the target unit requires a major movement or minor movement. The second step after that is to define the anchor unit. Because we apply force and moment to move our target unit, based on the third law of Newton, there would be a reaction forces and moment in opposite direction. Which structure will receive these opposite forces and moments? Similar to the target unit, that structure can be a dental arch, can be a segment, or individual tooth, or intra or extra oral anatomical structure of the hard tissue or soft tissue. By definition, anchor unit should move equal or less than target unit. If the anchor unit moves more than target unit, it should be considered as a target unit. And the other unit in reality acts as an anchor unit. Let's have an example of anchor unit when the both segments move equally. Assume we have an expander and we apply a force in both sides, action. Uh, the other side, also receive the reaction force of that action. So each segment of the expander acts as both target and anchor. You cannot say one side is target and the other side is anchor. Both of them equally act as an anchor unit and target unit. And supposedly they move similarly, even though not all the time. Sometimes we try to decrease the movement of anchor unit and there is many techniques that we will spend a few sessions discussing how to decrease the movement of anchor unit. Anyhow, by different technique, we can decrease the magnitude of the movement of the anchor unit. And even though uh, target unit and anchor unit are exposed to the similar magnitude of forces and moments, target unit move way more than the anchor unit. Sometimes, especially when we are uh, dealing with the minor movement, we really do not define the target unit and anchor unit. Actually, in different time points during the treatment, this minor movement, each uh, individual tooth can act both as an anchor or target unit. In another word, the system is not very defined. We call it undetermined system. Even though the system is not defined, it can produce relatively predictable result that is clinically very useful. So even though sometimes we define the target unit and anchor unit, especially during the major movement, during the minor movement, this definition is not necessary because both units can work as target and anchor unit. What is the next step? After we define the target unit, after we define the anchor unit, the next step is to define the type of tooth movement. If you remember from the volume one of the mechanotropy book, there is different type of tooth movement. We can have uncontrolled tipping, control tipping, translation. We should define this type of movements for each one of the targets you need before we designing our mechanotropy. Based on that type of tooth movement, the design will be different. Remember, in different stage of treatment, we may need a different type of movement for our target unit. So maybe we start with uncontrolled tipping and then we gradually walk toward translation. While we are defining this type of movements for the target unit, at the same time, we need to define this type of movement for anchor unit if we are expecting our anchor unit in a limited magnitude to move. If it is moving, we need to have control over that. Do we want uncontrolled tipping, control tipping, or translation for our anchor unit? So that should be also part of our design, and we will discuss that in more details when we talk about anchor unit. After defining the type of tooth movement for target unit and anchor unit, we need to decide which plane of a space we like to achieve the movement. Anatomically, we divide the space to three planes, sagittal plane, transverse plane, and coronal plane, three perpendicular planes together that can describe our movement. Most of the time, especially if the target unit is large, we like to move in one plane at a time. 
However, sometimes to decrease the duration of the treatment, we may decide to move the target unit in two or three planes at the same time. Combining these three planes based on the position of target unit will produce a unique uh, plane of movement that maybe is not coincide with the sagittal coronal or transverse. It's a new plane. After we decided about the plane of movement, we need to decide about the freedom of movement. This is very important. If, for example, we want to allow the target unit to move freely in sagittal, but we do not want to move in the coronal or transverse plane, we need to define that. How much freedom of movement we provide for our target unit? Which brings us to the next important subject in mechanotherapy design that is defining the degree of freedom and degree of control. Based on the degree of freedom and degree of control, we can have three designs. Free object design, where the magnitude of the freedom of the uh, movement of the object or the target is limitless. Semi-restricted design, where we control the movement in certain dimension while we allow the movement to occur in other dimension and fully restricted design that we prevent the movement in all dimension altogether. You guess correctly, the fully restricted design is used for the anchor unit. I will spend the next session talking about each one of these mechanotherapy design. I hope you enjoyed this session of CITOR channel and I hope if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And please don't forget to press the like button.